In this video, we're going to be talking about amplifier input impedance. Input impedance is defined as the voltage in divided by the current in. So the current in that you have is the current that's going through that voltage source that you have as your input. So we can jump right into the circuit analysis and begin with finding the input impedance for the inverting amplifier on the left. So the voltage in that we have is not given a defined voltage across that voltage source, but it turns out that that doesn't matter because the voltage and current are linearly related. So that means if you increase the voltage, you'll get a correspondingly linear increase in current, and that ratio is going to work out the same. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to label this voltage source a value of V in, and we're just going to leave that as a variable input voltage. And now we can begin with the normal circuit analysis, but the goal is going to be to find the ratio of that voltage and current. So let's start off with labeling our component currents. So we have a current going through. This is going to be I in because it's going through our voltage source. And this current has to travel around and through that 10K resistor. And this is because no current can go into the negative or positive inputs of the op amp. So let's label this current I in. And now we can go ahead and label our node voltages. So since this VIN is referenced to ground, this node here is going to be VIN, and our positive input is also connected to ground, and that gives it a zero potential. But because we know in an ideal op amp, the positive input and the negative input have the same potential, that means this node is going to be zero volts. And now we can label this output voltage, say, VO. Now that we've labeled our circuit, we can go ahead and write the equations for our components. So for our EFCs, we actually only need to write one equation for a component in order to find the input impedance. You can write the equations for both those resistors to solve the whole circuit, but if we're only looking for a Z in, all I have to do is write the equation for the 1K resistor. And that equation is going to be I in is equal to the potential across it, V in minus zero, divided by the resistance of 1,000 ohms. So the next thing I have to do is rearrange this so that way I can get V in divided by I in. So if I rearrange that to have V in divided by I in, I'm left with an input resistance of 1000 ohms. So for an inverting op amp like this, the input resistance that you see is just this first resistor. Now let's look at the non-inverting amplifier we have on the right. So let's do the same thing and we'll call this V in and we have a current coming in through that voltage source, we'll call this I in. Now, before we get any further labeling our circuit, something interesting should jump out at you. Since we know that no current can go into this amplifier, I in has to be equal to zero for an ideal op amp. So that means that Z in is going to be V in divided by zero. So at this point, from a mathematical standpoint, you might be thinking this is undefined. But typically in engineering, when we end up dividing things by zero, instead of saying it's undefined, we look at it as a limit. And we say that as the denominator gets very small, the total expression gets extremely large. And what that means is that this thing is approaching infinity. So this has infinite input impedance. If instead of having an ideal voltage source, you instead had a Thevenin source with a voltage source and a series resistance, you wouldn't see any loading effect due to that series of resistance in the case of a non-inverting amplifier. However, in the case of the inverting amplifier, you have this series resistance that affects the voltage you see at the input of your op amp. That's it for this video. I'll see you next time.